coming up, discover the secrets to bringing Godzilla, the King of Beasts, to life. Robotic animal superstars. Coming up, discover the secrets to bringing Godzilla, the King of Beasts, to life. Robotic animal superstars. Next, Mega Movie Magic. It's 350 feet tall. It can run 500 miles per hour. It's angry. It's pregnant. And it's coming to smash a city near you. Meet Godzilla, a mutant mega monster. For this colossal creature, a visit to the Big Apple is not exactly a vacation. Godzilla, King of the Monsters. The madcap mission for the movie makers is to hatch an all-new freak of nature based on the old classic Godzilla flicks. Fantastic beyond comprehension. But how in the world do you invent a new fire-breathing bulky mass of hugeness? Well, it all starts with one guy. His name is Patrick Tatopoulos. He's the one who gave Godzilla his new look. If you look at the old design, the creature is very heavy, big, heavy legs. So it's slow, massive. I couldn't use the old design and make him look like he runs 500 miles per hour in the streets of New York. Patrick's creation begins with a piece of paper, a pencil, and a cup of coffee. What spills out of Patrick's brain and onto the paper is this totally terrifying break in the food chain. Now he can start constructing the most awesome creature ever feared. First, Patrick builds a maquette, or a small model of what Godzilla will look like. Then he can build all the big models to look exactly like it. His basic shape is still very much like a dragon. His torso and arms and hands are extremely human. We want him to use his face like a crocodile, like an iguana. His legs are dinosaur legs, which means they're like bird legs. So I went to look at ostriches. To make Godzilla move, Patrick has to make the most gnarly dino suit since the Ice Age. Watch. Now that these guys look like mutant radiation monsters, they need to act like it. On your mark, get set, go! Welcome to Zilla School. It's the only place the teacher will educate you on the importance of running in the halls, digging in the dirt, and snarfing down old stinky fish. Meet Robot Godzilla. Patrick constructs this animatronic creature, which means it's like a remote control Godzilla. To make Godzilla move, Patrick has to make the most gnarly dino suit since the Ice Age. Watch. Now that these guys look like mutant radiation monsters, they need to act like it. On your mark, get set, go! Welcome to Zilla School. It's the only place the teacher will educate you on the importance of running in the halls, digging in the dirt, and snarfing down old stinky fish. Meet, to make Godzilla move, Patrick has to make the most gnarly dino suit since the Ice Age. Watch. Now that these guys look like mutant radiation monsters, they need to act like it. On your mark, get set, go! Welcome to Zilla School. It's the only place the teacher will educate you on the importance of running in the halls, digging in the dirt, and snarfing down old stinky fish. Meet Robot Godzilla. Patrick constructs this animatronic creature, which means it's like a remote control Godzilla, and it's programmed by a computer. Some of the models need to be giant. Take this Godzilla torso, for example. 
This mechanical monster is 36 feet tall, weighs 14,250 pounds, and runs by remote control. Patrick knows that for close-up shots, Godzilla needs to look real. Good boy. So this gargantuan Godzilla does the trick. Hi, big scary monster. This bionic beast is so hungry, he could eat a truck. The crew even fills up the truck with all kinds of cargo trash, creating a big spill. These mammoth models definitely create the feeling of absolute largeness. Taxi! But even they don't have cab chasing capabilities. It's time to bring out the secret weapon. The CG or computer generated Godzilla. Meet Volker Engel. He's the visual effects supervisor, which means he's in charge of all the fancy effects in the movie. When you look at the creature, around 90% of the creature effects in the movie were created with a computer. 90%? 90%. <laughs> and here at a company called Centropolis, each Godzilla part is scanned into the computer. See this arm? It's divided up into sections. Then the computer zaps in each point and creates a skeleton or wire frame. It's like connect the dots. Once the skeleton is assembled, it's time to put on the skin and muscles. Ta-da! Godzilla is in the house. It's like making a sandwich. You always start with a clean plate. The clean plate is the background that the director films first. And then the other computer ingredients, the cab, the crater, and the splash, are slapped on top. In this scene, making cars hurl through the air is as easy as a green screen. A green screen is like using a cookie cutter. You can cut out the hurling car and paste it on a background of the city street. Now all we need is a giant explosion and a big nasty beast. Paste them on the background and voila! The scene is complete. I'll bet you wouldn't believe that this shot is totally computerized. No way. Stop. I can prove it. Take away the lights, get rid of the cab, no more sky, can the beast, lose the bridge, and all that's left is a background. They start from scratch with this tiny bridge. That's not very scary. Right. They start from scratch with this tiny bridge. That's not very scary. Right. So they added all these wicked layers of detail until Godzilla is ready to smash whatever gets in its way. So with a powered-up blast from the computer, Patrick Totopoulos' new Godzilla was transformed into a techno beast with a mega bite. On movie star fluke. And allow me to introduce my other showbiz buddies. Meet Monkey Superstar from the movie Ed. Nice to meet you. From the film The Edge, Bart the Bear. Hello. And commercial stars.